these are the people of the book. That's right. We here to show, according to the scriptures, that as a nation of people, we are all returning. We are coming back as a nation. The 12 lost tribes of Israel now found. So you got to ask yourself, where did this doctrine that God's laws are done away with come from? The people that did this to you. Because they know that you are the children of Israel. Can you hear me? Con. Okay, my name is Liberty. It's nice to meet everyone. How are you guys today? We're well. Nice to meet you, Sister Liberty. Um, well, my Hebrew name is uh, Adonaya. Um, if you've ever come across my page, it's Adonaya Robinson. Okay, that's pretty. Thank you. Where are you from, yeah. Sister Liberty? I'm from uh from Texas. I'm actually Princess Adah's uh daughter. Oh, okay. Shalom. Nice to meet you. I'll let everyone go first and then I'll go last. Well, okay, so let me go. I'm Princess Adah. And um, I'm like she said, I'm her mother, I'm Adonaya's mother. Um, I live in Texas, and um, I don't attend a physical body, but I am a part of the Relit Ministry online uh, Bible study. Oh, praises! Yeah, so okay. that's about it. <laughs> All right. Um, shalom, everybody. I, I don't know if everybody can hear me. I'm currently driving right now, um, but my name is uh, uh, Pathwell Ben Yako, and uh, uh, Princess Ada. I'm just now learning. I've been pronouncing your name wrong this whole entire time. So, but uh, <laughs> yeah, <I'm, laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, I am the moray of a um, Bible study group called uh, Relay Bible Study, and. Um, I currently reside right outside of St. Louis, Missouri, and I've been in the truth uh, 30 years. I've been in the truth, and uh, All praise. Give great honor and praise to the Most High for that. Uh, so shalom to everybody. I'm excited about the discussion that's going to happen tonight. Shalom. Nice to meet you, sir. Uh, shalom, everyone. My name is uh, Andrew Harris, and uh, my name is... Um, it's uh, my Hebrew name is Arai, which means Lion of God, and um, it is a it is quite a pleasure to be on this call. Um, I've been in the truth probably my whole life. I just didn't know it, and um, it's amazing how things work. And then one day you just have an awakening moment that things start making sense a little bit. I'm really um, proud um, to meet my uh, my sister uh, uh, Rafiala and um, having conversations with her and um uh, and growing in my my direction and it is quite a pleasure to be on this call this evening and i look forward to the information that is going to be discussed all praises who else is out there i see relit Bible shalom study. shalom shalom yep this uh i have relit under my name it's out pathwell uh raha pathwell's wife my name is elise um some also refer to me with my Hebrew name is Ariel. It's actually my middle name. So I also go by Ariel sometimes. And um, 
I've been in the truth uh, going on 22 years. Wow. Um, and that's, that's beautiful. I'm kind of shy, so I don't really talk <laughs> a lot, but I'm glad to be here. Nice to see everyone. Look forward to everything being shared. And uh, shalom. Shalom. Nice to meet you, sis. Aqua or Akoti. Wow, 22 years. Wow. Who is that? We see iPhone there. Who's the iPhone? That was Brother Pat. Oh, okay. 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 I guess I'll go next. Uh, shalom, everyone. My name is Rafa Allah, Yasha Allah, and I am currently residing in Columbus, Ohio. I'm from Cleveland, born and raised, Ohio. I've been in the truth for a total of seven years now. And um I could pretty much relate with uh, Ak, uh, Arya. The truth has uh, been like a journey my whole life. Um, the, the light bulb finally came on during the year of 2017, right after we had that solar eclipse. And that was the year of my true awakening. And it took like, 12 months after that just to transform into who I am now you know uh, just reality set in like 12 months after I was awakening so here I am and I'm still learning and um, I guess we'll never stop learning and I am truly blessed I feel blessed to be awakening to the truth and I am I feel blessed to be online with you guys tonight and looking forward to breaking bread with you. All righty. Um, so we know that the topic for this evening is what does it mean to be a, a Hebrew Israelite? Um, I've been in the truth, um, I guess I wouldn't say officially, since 2018, but I've been aware since um, 2012. But even in the years that I have been in the truth, there's been a lot of um, information, a lot of uh, doctrine, I should say, that I've come across that has kind of had me a little confused going every which way, um, you know, because there's a lot of things, you know, there's you know, from the name of the Messiah and, and, and the Most High to, you know, what we should and shouldn't do. There's so much, um, um, just so much information. Everyone has an opinion on it. So I think it was, it's good that we're having this meeting because even though even, like I said, I've been here for a while, but there's still questions even I still have about, you know, how, like, what feast days or how should I be doing these feast days? Because, you know, I've been told this, I've been told that. Um, should I say, you know, how do I do this? How do I do that? What do I wear? What, you know, and I feel like even if I've been doing this for this long and I still have questions, I can't imagine somebody fresh coming in, what it must be doing to to them, you know? So oh, I think yes. it's good that we can have this meeting um, to try to see if we can't, you know, figure some things out and kind of erase out the bad information and get the truth because it is called the truth. So we mm -hmm. need to get to the truth of how to be in the truth, you know? That's right. Uh, and I can relate. So Sister Rafaela, I'm going to give you the lead, ma'am. Shalom, everyone. Um, what is the truth? How do how do you all define what the truth is? Uh, Me, this, uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, this is uh, 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 this is a uh, uh, Rob Pastor Bell being your goal. Yes, I want to say that uh, uh, what what I believe and what I teach as being the truth is uh, one's uh, one place in their faith. In Yahshua the Messiah and walking according to uh, the Ruach Hakadesh or the, the Spirit of Yah that He has given each and each and every one of us 
that's going to lead and guide us into all true. You know, I don't like, um, I believe it was uh, Andrew, uh, you know, what he was saying about uh, he's been in the truth basically all his life, but he just have awakened to certain truths within his walk or journey with the Most High. And I, I, I relate to that as well, too. I believe that one's journey in the truth or being in the truth is not based upon what type of information you have at the initial stages. It's about one surrendering their life to pursue the righteousness of Yah and maintaining the testimony and the witness of who Yahshua is. Because at the end of the day, whether a person identifies as an Israelite or whether they don't know that they're an Israelite, at the end of the day, they're not going to be judged according to whether they knew there was an Israelite or not. They're going to be judged according to their walk, according to their faith, uh, according to their works, basically, uh, what the scripture teaches. You know, So uh, I believe that uh, those are the essential things that we need to really uh, focus on. Uh, the other things are things that we learn as we progress in this journey, and they're just as important, but we cannot uh, dismiss the weightier matters of Torah, like Yahshua told the uh, scribes and the Pharisees. He said, you pay your tithes and you do all these things, but the weightier matters of Torah, those things you have left off, you know. So mm -hmm. I think that we really need to focus on the weightier matters of Torah, and that is how one is living their life. All right, mm -hmm. they're walking in obedience to the Most High. Do, are they maintaining the faith and relying upon Yahshua for salvation? Because he is the one that has justified us according to the prophecies that we see mentioned in the law and the prophets that he is he is the one that has justified us uh, before the Father. Con, con. I totally agree. I agree with that. Uh, my, my view of... Uh, of the truth is uh, coming from Proverbs uh, 7 and 2, keeping the laws. Um, it's a lifestyle, culture, and practicing the customs and the statutes of the Most High. Um, we also know that the truth is the law and law is the light. And love is also the laws. That's what I my view on what the truth is. It's your total worship, your walk in the in the most high, walking in the spirit, as um the brother, as the brother was just saying. That was that's that was a good breakdown of that, definitely. Okay, I used to wonder too um the reasons why it was called the truth. Um because I know there's other things, uh, other beliefs that also claim to be the truth, you know. Um, but, you know, like I said, um, if it doesn't line up with the word of Yah, you know, because there's so I don't even understand how there's so many doctrines out here. Um, but I guess they're, I guess, man-made, if you want to say. Or how come we haven't all come to a, a general knowledge or a general truth thing? Because I guess it's just like, you know, even with the Christian church, there are so many different dominate, you know, denominations. Um, you know, and I and I kind of see that kind of happening in the truth, you know, because I kind of thought when I came in, it was just like, you know, one belief, one one thing, you know. And it's been so much debate, so much, you know you know, to be Masonic, Messianic or Torah only to be, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, who's Esau? You know, should we do monogamy, polygamy? Should we, how do we keep the <laughs> Sabbath? You know, how do we, how do you dress? Can, you know, like the women, can you wear pants? Can you not wear pants? You know what I mean? Can you wear makeup? Can you not wear makeup? You know, yeah. like it is so much to unpack, you know? Badness. Um, I, like, I wish we had, like, I remember when we were in Christian church, there was a, um, like when you would join a church, they would have a new members class to kind of mm -hmm. get you, you know, aware of all of the, you know, the the ways of the church, those, you know, the, the, the statutes and the, you know, all those things. But we don't necessarily always have that in the truth. You know, I mean, I think they do maybe in the camps. I've never belonged to one, but um, I just wish we had something like that, 
you know what I mean, on a yeah. regular basis for new people coming in, like a new new Israelites class or something, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, that's why we're doing this talk panel. Yeah. And, um, it, you know, just like Sister Da was saying, it's just so much. I believe um, this is what's, what's keeping us divided as a people. Uh, we're divided. It's hard to unify when there are so many different doctrines out here, different beliefs. I believe there's just too many chiefs and not enough Indians. You know, and I believe that's what's con contributing to uh, the confusion within uh, the house of Yasharala. So uh, when I when I uh, fellowship and communicate with my um, fellow Israelites, I try to avoid um, using the name that I call the most high in the conversations. And I try to refrain from, you know, um, putting information out there, like the doctrines that I come from and just keep it like basic. You know what I mean? So that way we could come together and we could, we could fellowship, we could congregate and push like those little simple things aside so that we can unify. I would like to ask everyone, um, especially for those who's been in the truth for a while, for someone who's coming in new or maybe even been here, but just don't know where to begin, what do you believe is the first step Aside from being, you know, aside from telling them, you know, like the, everybody goes by, you know, Deuteronomy 28, this is how you know if you're an Israelite. Okay, once you establish or once they have accepted that, okay, I'm an Israelite, what's the next move you need to do? If um, this is uh, this is a ride, what I would suggest is um, the first move is um, work on your personal relationship with the Most High. Work on your communication understand that he you know presides and rules over everything you know you can have all the knowledge in the world but you still don't have a relationship with our heavenly father that's good Period. yeah mm -hmm. and see that's where that love come in based on proverbs uh chapter 6 verse 23 that's where that love come in Yeah, because I think what he said was very, uh, the brother said was very uh, good because I know like when I first really kind of was introduced, um, nobody really was like, you know, um, like you said, cultivate your relationship with the most high. It was, you in the truth now? All right, throw on these fringes, stop eating pork, make sure you keep the Sabbath. Okay, make sure you stop saying God and Jesus, make sure you say this. You know, Esau is the white man, so make sure you know that. You know, uh, what tribe you from? You from Judah. You Where you from? You from, you know? Like, it was never like, okay, sister, you know, now we got to get your relationship with the most high. And it was just like, all these things was coming at me. And I'm like, wait, what the heck? Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> you know? It's a lot. And I, you know, uh, when I first came into the truth, I was mentored by, um, I called her my big sister and she's a sister in Florida. And she was like holding my hand as I was coming into the truth. You know, the last time I ran into her, she totally walked away from the faith. She took her fringes off and everything because of all the confusion, you know, it just so it just so to happen I lasted this long because I was mentally strong enough to just overlook. You know what I mean? I was over to I was able to over just overlook that, and I just got into this book and I read it for myself. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, because um, and I think that also comes with definitely having a genuine relationship with the Most High, aside mm -hmm. from all of the other stuff that's going around because I, I, you know, I've been kind of on that for a while talking to sisters, you know, why they've left and the various reasons. Like I even did a little, uh, little documentary about sisters leaving the truth, going over to all the different spiritualities and so forth. And a lot of them had similar stories to why they left was because they felt basically pushed out, you know, either from what they felt was misogyny or like mm -hmm. I said, it was just too much, too much. And they just didn't know where to go. 
So they just went completely left, you know? Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. think if you don't have that relationship already with the most high within you, it is very easy to turn away from the truth, you know? Yes, yes. Yeah. 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 I, I just want to say like in the, you know, the years that I've been, um, you know, um, walking with the most high, I've seen, you know, pe countless of people turn away from the truth just for those reasons. They become discouraged. And, and a lot of times uh, individuals just try to throw so much at them at one time and not using wisdom and, and allowing people to grow, you know, in, in their process, you know. It's just like even with children, you know, uh, children as human beings, we all have a process of maturity and growth and cycles and seasons that we go through. And when a child is uh, put in situations where they have to grow up a lot faster than normal, then you'll see certain anxieties, certain behavioral dysfunctions and things of that nature. And, you know, it's the same thing spiritually wise too, you know, and um, mm -hmm. one of the verses that really stick out to me is something that Paul mentions in uh, Philippians chapter one, verse 15 to verse uh, 18. And I think that this is one of the main things that we're seeing, you know, within this uh, movement is individuals such as this, as, as Paul is. Uh, talking about in uh, Philippians chapter one verse fifteen, and I, I'm I'm going to I'm going to read it right quick, and, and he says, um, "Some he preach Messiah, even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill." So we have those that come into this truth, and their arterial motive is just to preach it for envy and for strife, you know, for contention and debate, and oh, I'm this and you're that, and you should be doing this and you should be doing that. And you're not doing this because of such and such. And you, you're, you're not doing this because I'm more righteous than you, you know, and they have these mm -hmm. attitudes and it's such envy and strife and it's not of goodwill, not of good intentions. You know, that's one of the things that, um, that I believe that's very important as um, uh, the sister was saying is mentorship, you know, having the mm -hmm. right type of mentors and people that, the most high leads you to to give you understanding and guidance, you know, through your journey and through your walk with the most high. You know, you have to make sure that these individuals have goodwill. Their intentions are good. They don't have arterial motives. They are not full of strife and envy and contentions, because when the mm -hmm. word is preached that way, then uh, people will set up a wall of defense. You know, I, I, you know, I tell my children, I tell people all the time. You know, scripture tell us that um, that uh, uh, a gentle word would turn away a person's wrath. You know, that's the truth. So we have to be very tact tactful in how we deliver the word, deliver the truth, and make sure we're not um, uh, that we're ministering to people, preaching mm -hmm. to them, not preaching at them. Uh, the next verse says this: It says, "But others of love, knowing that I am set." For the defense of the bazaar or the message, you know, and we're mm -hmm. set for defense of the message. And those who do it for envy and for strife, we have to defend the faith as we're doing tonight. We have to defend the faith and That's let true. others out there know that all Israelites are not the same. Just like Sister Ada was saying, you know, we we're seeing the same thing being rehashed within this walk, uh, within this awakening as it is in Christ, uh, Christianity, you know, there's different denominations, different doctrines, different things that's going on, but we have to have a defense of the true message of Yahshua, the Messiah, the true message of the Torah, the true message of the law and the prophets and defend it against the, uh, uh, the, the tarnishing that we're seeing being done um, in this awakening and let other people know that there are those who are walking in the spirit. There are those who are not, doing it for strife and for contention. The next mm -hmm. uh, verse says, um, it says, uh, what then, uh, notwithstanding uh, every way, whether in the presence of truth, of the truth, Messiah is preached and I therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. So, you know, 
we know that uh, the same thing is like the camps and things of that nature. Even though a lot of the things that they preach, uh, I consider false doctrine. I consider mm -hmm. misogynist. You know, I consider mm -hmm. to be of ill will. But they do have some truths that is being pushed for. You know, and those things are good. But you know, we just have to. Uh, you know, use that strainer effect. We have to hold fast to that which is good and discard those things uh, that are uh, not profitable for us as we grow in this truth. Mm hmm Con, con. That's good. Uh, all praises. All praises. And then that's what I was, um, when I was sending you those, the question list, um, Sister Raphael, I was saying, um, it made me think about a meal when you're coming into the truth um, mm -hmm. where it's like a five or six course meal, but they kind of right. take it all in one thing and shove it down your throat <laughs> instead of taking it course by course, you know, and then you wonder why people get sick and regurgitating it out or, you know what I mean? Um, Cause me. you, yeah. get un you done force fed it to them, you know, <laughs> and this, this truth is a lot, especially if you're coming from another faith, I think it might yeah. be easier to deal with someone who hasn't been in any faith versus coming because you got to relearn. And sometimes relearning yeah. is harder than when you don't know it at all, you know? Yeah, and, and and unlearning everything that I was taught from Christianity was just like going from an adult back into a baby, baby like one years old, you know? And that was hard and it was very humbling. Mm -hmm. um, because I've descended from a line of preachers and bis bishops. My whole bloodline is preachers and bishops. My mother was a Christian pastor for 30 years. So just imagine coming from that, and I'm the only one in my family that the Most High awakened into the truth, and me happened to go against all of them. And... That was tough. So I had to get into this word and I had to learn it. I mean, fast just to defend my faith. I'm right there with you. Um, my dad, um, he was, well, he's an elder now, but he's always been preaching. Um, my grandfather, which was his dad, was a preacher. You know, mm -hmm. my grandmother was a devout, you know, hardcore, you know, uh, Baptist, you know, we was apostolic, we was Baptist, you know, so I grew up strict Christian for the most part of my life, you know, um, Same here. and um, like I say, yeah, it's it's definitely something when you come in, because it's like, wait a minute, you know, I thought I knew everything, you know, coming in, I thought I was like, I've been here for a minute, you know, I'm thinking, I'm, really, you know, and this is like, wait, what, you know, like, hold on, I felt kind of dumb, you know, like, hold on, I thought I knew the word, you know. Yeah, but it is. It can be very humbling coming in, you know, especially like humbling. coming from a, another religion. It can be very humbling. Very humbling. I had a good mentor too, because she was like on me, like white on rice, about from the way I eat, my clothes, my hair. So it's like coming into the truth. My first twelve months, it was rough. I had to go in my closet and throw all my clothes out and the trick, give it away. You know, all my little sexy clothes, you know, my nickname used to be Mary J. Blige because that's who I used to dress like, Mary J. Blige. So I had to go from Mary J. Blige to Mother Teresa. So it's like she had to critique me on almost everything. I had to unlearn all my habits. At, at 40, I was 40 years old at the time. So that was rough, um, Ox and Aquas. Yes, yes. Um, I another verse just came to my mind. This is as well. Another verse just came to my mind. Um, as uh, Sister Da was talking about that plague, how you know, in uh, we, a lot of times we come into this uh, truth, you know, there are individuals that try to just just shove, you know, this truth, all of these things, they try to cram it on one plate and just try to feed it to you. And also, there are those who come into this truth and they're excited and they're ready to eat. They're ready to, you know, devour and consume. But the uh, Proverbs chapter 25, verse 16 says this. And this is a verse that I always give to uh, new believers, newcomers, you know, that contact me and things of that nature. You know, I warn them of the dangers of 
trying to, you know, just study all different topics, you know, at one time, you know. It's, it's very good to take your time mm -hmm. and digest what you're hearing, digest what you're uh, 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 seeing, you know, and, and, and let it marinate and let your spiritual body, you know, digest it, you know, because a lot of mm -hmm. times, uh, if you don't, you know, Proverbs chapter 25 verse 6 says this, if you find honey, eat just enough. You know, you find honey, eat just enough. So, you know, when a lot of people come to this truth, it's sweet to them. You know, it's, it's sweet. But we have to learn how to do things in moderation, you know, and yeah. eat just enough. And the scripture goes on to say, it says, too much of it and you will vomit. And mm -hmm. that's what has happened with a lot of people. Like I said, I've been in this truth, basically, like uh, the brother was saying, all, all of my life. But, you know, mm -hmm. we started keeping the Sabbath feast day, started learning about who we were as a people. And my father was an assistant pastor and evangelist of the assembly that we um, started in Charlotte, North Carolina back in mm -hmm. the mid 80s. And as a child, I was reared in the truth, you know, mm -hmm. and my wife, yeah. likewise, you know, her parents uh, earlier on in their lives came into the truth. So me and my wife have been reared in the truth. Our marriage has been based upon Hebrew culture. So we understand Hebrew culture. We understand a lot of things and, you know, a lot of things that we've seen, as you all are mentioning, in this walk, we've seen it multiple times. With polygyny, we've seen some devastating stories about polygyny, Woo! misogyny, um, you know, especially the abuse and misuse of the women, you know. Oh, oh it's, 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 it's horrendous, you know. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's horrendous. And all the false doctrines and all the false teachings and People who are just in it because, oh, I'm an Israelite, I'm an Israelite, I'm an Israelite. Mm -hmm. But they mm -hmm. miss that, you know, being an Israelite don't get you into the kingdom, you know. It sure will. You know, Abba, mm -hmm. Abba, Abba Yad destroyed thousands of Israelites who knew who they were, and the world knew who they were, too. The mm -hmm. nation knew who they were. But because of their disobedience, because of mm -hmm. the lack of faith that they had in the Most High, they didn't enter into the promise and they entered the kingdom. And I'm seeing the same circle just happening all back over again. And that's why the scripture tells us that it's only going to be a remnant that shall be saved, you know. Even out of the literal lineage of the tribes of Israel, um, I was reading in Romans, Romans chapter 11, I believe, how Paul was talking about that uh, there is a remnant according to the election. And the context that Paul was saying that in was, uh, exclusively um, talking about the nation of Israel. He was talking about the nation of Israel, that even within the nation, that there is a uh, remnant that is chosen according to election, you know. So mm -hmm. we have to understand that a lot of people are not going to get it. You know, they're not mm -hmm. going to understand it. You know, they're not going to uh, re uh, receive the truth, you know. Mm -hmm. And when I, when I minister to people, and if they don't get it, if they can't receive it, I don't force it on them. I, I still am very cordial, you know, very open with them. I still leave that bridge open whereby, you know, maybe the most high used me to plant a seed, you know, in their lives that they may go down the road and, and see, okay, this, this start to make sense to me because everybody don't get it right then. In there, but yeah. that vomiting is a is is the confusion that happens a lot of times with people. Mm -hmm. They begin to vomit. The truth begins to make them sick because they have a, just they they they've disgorged themselves on so many teachers, so many mores, so many mm -hmm. doctors, and that's why I always advise people to seek Yah. You know, everybody will be coming to this truth. I believe that it's important that we find more race, that we find uh, pastors or individuals that can help point us in the right direction or point us to the uh, path in which we should go, you know. But we have to make sure that we're not allowing our eyes to deceive us because a lot of people look at, oh, how many followers this person have or how many mm -hmm. views they have on YouTube and they miss the what, what the Most High is trying to 
uh, the person that the Most High is trying to lead them to so that they might get the nourishment that they need oh. for that season so that they may go on and mature and be able to no, uh, man, no, make disciples of other people, people that the Most High may use them to reach as well. Mm-hmm. You know, when I first came into the truth, um, I was very angry and excited at the same time. Mm-hmm. Can you all imagine how I, I was angry, mad, and then I realized, you know, we put ourselves in this position. Mm-hmm. The most high sent uh, our enemies to come take us yes. and bring us into captivity because of our disobedience. Um, they were only doing what they were commanded to do. And That's I so had true. to learn that. <laughs> and then I also had to learn that when I first came into the truth, I was so excited and angry at the same time. You should have seen my social media account. It was crazy. <laughs> I was like, y'all got to get this. Y'all got y'all going to do this, do that, do that. And then I, it, it came to me that the reason they're not getting it is because they're walking in disobedience. So the Most High has blinded their eyes. He don't want them to get it. They're not ready. I had right. to learn I was stressing myself out. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, that anger that a lot of people, because, you know, of course, it's a natural emotion. Anger is a natural emotion. And when a lot of people come into the truth and they find out how lied and and deceived that we've been, especially as so-called African-Americans and black people and, and how the Bible has been taught to us as a people, there's a certain resentment and anger towards, you know, a certain demographic or race of people, as you mentioned, uh, Okoti. And a lot of a lot of brothers, instead of them re- redirecting that anger and having them to understand why they're angry and, and also understanding that the reason why, see, see because... Uh, a lot of camps don't want to place the blame where it belongs. And like you said, uh, Koti, that's a great revelation the Most High gave you at that time, is that mm-hmm. we are the reason why we're in the predicament that we're in now. The nations and what they've done to us, we've only been able to do mm-hmm. it because we forsaken our Most High, you know. And mm-hmm. the scripture in, in the book of Deuteronomy, I'm going to paraphrase it, uh, but there's a verse that says that... Um, the only way that we could be sold or uh, manipulated as a people is that if our rock sold us, you know. Mm. So our, our, our rock, which is uh, Yahweh, Almighty, mm-hmm. you know, he, he sold us into slavery, you know, mm-hmm. because of our disobedience, because we continually walk in transgression and, and rebellion uh, towards him. So the Most High specifically told us that he was going to sell us into slavery. But a lot of mores and, 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 and camps, as you mentioned, you know, they don't tell the truth in regards to that. So a lot of the anger of individuals and young men and young women and even older people that come into the truth become displaced and they begin mm-hmm. to focus on, you know, the white man or this man or that man when they should be focused on the hidden man of their own heart. You know, exactly. We are the reason why we're still in the state that we are. We are the reason why we're still living the way that we're living. Uh, I remember years ago that Tyler mentioned about the cursing and the blessing and how, you know, certain ministries and camps uh, manipulate individuals who are in the truth still uh, saying that, oh, we're cursed or we're this or we're that. And the scripture clearly tells us that. If we keep God's commandments, if we mm. turn from our wicked ways, then he will begin to bless us, you know. And I know that's At that right. time, a lot of mores, they came against me because it mm. wasn't the popular thing to say back then. But I wanted to encourage the brothers and sisters who are walking in the truth, who are striving for the righteousness of Yah, that you're no longer cursed. You're not cursed, you know. We you're sure are. walking in the curse. The Most High is, is blessing you. Just by the mm-hmm. very fact that he's opened up your eyes to the truth is a blessing, you know, and yes, that we don't is. have to be 
broke down, busted, and disgusted. Even in the land of our captivity, we see how Daniel, he was a righteous man. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, these men were in captivity, such captivity as we are today, but they thrived, and God used good. them. And they were great influence, and they were a part of the political system of the, of, 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 of the Chaldeans and things of that nature. So, you know, uh, it's very important that our people understand that as well, too, that coming into this truth is not bondage. It's, it's not, it's, it, should, it's, it shouldn't be put upon us to make us feel that, oh, because we're in America, where we're scattered to, that we have to continue in the curse. This is the reason why this awakening is happening, because the Most High want us to remember the blessing and mm -hmm. the curse. That's what it said in Deuteronomy chapter 31, I believe. He said that mm -hmm. when you we call to mind the blessing. He didn't say the curse first. He said the blessing and mm -hmm. the curse. When mm -hmm. we begin to look in scripture and get to study, we begin to see that when we turn back to the Most High, we turn back to the thoughts, and commandments, we re get the true revelation of who Yahshua is, then we can be blessed. And then we can see, okay, I was cursed as a result of disobedience. But now that I'm walking in obedience, I can receive this blessing. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on. You know, the one. I, I want. I want to. Add, uh, I agree with everything that's been said. Well, one of the things that I've, uh, you know, I've learned in this, in this, um, in this journey is is uh, being very humble in my spirit. And uh, when I started to to go over the scriptures and just look at things, I learned to something that we can't let, we cannot lie to the Most High. He already knows our thoughts. We have mm -hmm. to be very honest and sincere with him and show him the highest degree of respect. And so when, I, when I'm uh, in my day-to-day, -day, I'm, seeking, I'm seeking forgiveness for my evil thoughts or things that I didn't even know I was doing. I'm always asking, like, please, I'm sorry. If I disrespected you, please forgive me. It was not my intent. I mean, I'm, and, and in my journey, I've been... Um, becoming more and more humble of him because it's, it's, it's a scripture. And I hope I say it right. Uh, to fear him is the beginning of what? <laughs> no. uh, yes. Mm -hmm. And, um, but when we go to, when we went to our churches, they, they, they told us stuff like we can sin forever and still be forgiven by grace. Like they was teaching us and conditioning uh, us incorrectly. Not and and we was not showing the Most High the highest degree of respect because mm -hmm. they was teaching us we could just sin continuously and our sins would be forgiven blah 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 so um and I and I, when I came into this 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 understanding I was like whoa let me let me humble my spirit so one of the scriptures that I started uh, I grew up looking at this scripture ever since I was a little boy my I didn't understand why my mother was always reading this to me, but it was the 51st Psalms. Are you mm. familiar with the 51st Psalms? Have mercy upon me, Ahaya, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out all my iniquities or my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Now I understand the humbleness behind this when we speak to him. What are we to do? And um, it is it is amazing. I I've learned that the first thing that we have to do is um, you know uh, improve our connectivity, improve our relationship, our sincerity. Uh, we do live in a world that is highly corrupt. Even amongst ourselves, we are highly. How can I say it? Our relationships in our culture, we are, we're at odds. We've been at odds for many, many years amongst each other. We're constantly criticizing and, 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 and talking to each other. I, I look at different cultures and I'm like, wow, why do we operate this way? Why are we so divided? Um, I'm always praying about this because I, I, I see, I see these things. Um, mm -hmm. so it's very, it's, it's, it's in my walk now, what I've done is I've, um, um, I've taken a step back. I've become more observant. I've become more um, humble. A lot of people are not ready for the truth, too. 
when you talk to them, they're, they're going to look at you like sideways. They're looking at you like, what's wrong with you? They, they look at the 66 Bible, the 66 books, and like, I got it all. This is it, you know? And, and, I'm, and I'm looking at them like, there are so many details that's missed. And sometimes people are not ready for it because you would be at a po- uh, opposition right off the bat by just talking to them. So I've kind of taken a step back because now it's like when he tells me to do something, I'm talking about a higher, when he tells me to do something, then I do it. If he tells me to sit down and shut up, I shut up. <laughs> Go sit in that corner. And I've had these experiences where he's done that to me. I didn't like it, but it was very humbling. And I, I learned who I serve. And this is a it's an amazing experience. And as these precious years go by, mm. now I understand. You know, um, I have a number of books. I have a lot of information. But now the question becomes: out of all the books that I have. <laughs> He was, the Heavenly Father told me one day, he says, why you didn't ask me first? Mm. I would have told you. Mm. I said, I said, what? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he lives inside of us. Yes. Mm-hmm. yes. So he speaks to us all the time if we just pay attention and be quiet, like you say. Right, and listen to him because he's talking to us. And sometimes we are misdirected by um, everything that's happening around us. But. Again, through that silence, through, through our prayers, through our isolation, through us putting ourselves in a place where we can listen. Now I understand what that means. I didn't, I didn't get it at first. And it takes a little time to, you know, and, and, and I'm not going to admit that I know a lot because I want to remain humble in my spirit. And I'm going to say I know a little because um, I've learned that when, we, when our cup is halfway full, that it can be filled. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Get more, so I'm like I'm like so I'm I'm the, the and the humbleness is a hard concept too. It's like you don't just if you're if you, you know sometimes <clears throat> I'm gonna say it this way, and I mean no disrespect. Sometimes the smartest person in the, in the room can be how do you say it the dumbest person because we lean to our own understanding, and I didn't get that at first. I was like, <sighs> my biggest problem is. I did not know it, but I was leaning to my own understanding. I have to admit it. I got to, I got to, I got to put it on the table. Mm. If I would have just listened to what he said or waited for his response, things would be different in my life. He, he, he taught me this. Now mm. I, I decided, I'm sorry, Heavenly Father. My, <laughs> my fault. I apologize. It's my bad. Okay. I, I got your point. Please stop. <laughs> I got your point. I understand. Okay, okay, I, I see now. I see. And it took many years to get it. Um, but now mm-hmm. now I see, now I can understand he's been patient with me. You know, mm-hmm. he's been, he's been, <laughs> because I've seen a lot of people up out of here right now. I'm seeing people passing away. People are not given the yes. same opportunity that we are given. So he definitely has something for us to do. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, if he didn't, we would not be here. We have a purpose, you know, mm. so I, I appreciate these, this right here, what we're doing today. I appreciate everybody on this because I, I hear that motivation. I hear it. And um, I, I just want to put this on the table. You know, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. He has a mission for us. He's teaching us. And when he's willing, when, it, when he wants to, he's going to call upon us. He's going to put, and we, and, and we are expected to perform at the highest level. Mm, so yeah. um so let's continue i, I just want to be motivated let's continue to do what we're doing right now absolutely i totally agree i'm i'm really feeling this how often do you guys think we should do this sister I princess believe, i believe monthly is good because like i said new people are always coming in and not just with the new people like i said I've been here for a meeting and I still have questions, you know, I still, yeah. I'm still kind of like, you know, asking my sister, well, well, what I'm supposed to do on this feast day or how am I supposed to, <laughs> I don't know, you know, <laughs> like, I still feel like I'm out of it. And I'm like, come on now, you got to get it together. You know, I was just telling her I need a, a, a Hebrew Israelite calendar for the feast days and what I'm supposed to do for them, you uh-huh. know, like, cause even like with the Hanukkah, I still have questions about Hanukkah. 
You know, like, are we supposed to do it? Are we not supposed to? Is that a Jewish? Mm -hmm. Is that an Israelite holiday? Like, I mean, it's not, I didn't see it in one of the seven appointed feast days. So, you know, I have questions about some of these things. I keep right. them all. I keep right. them all, family. Uh, uh, Brother uh, Akmalek will tell you, I, I text him all the time. I say, okay, this feast day coming up, this one coming up. And he'll tell you, I, I keep them on point with those the feast days. Mm -hmm. um, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, I keep them all. I mean, why not? You know, because I've heard people say, well, certain days you can't keep because we're in the land of our captivity. So you can't even yeah. do that one just yet. You know, this is what I said. It's about it's so much different information yeah. that comes, you know, and maybe mm -hmm. that's partially because I didn't, you know, I don't belong to an actual set group, but mm -hmm. um. I've just had, like I said, it's just coming all different ways. So I'm just like, well, what are we supposed to keep here in the land of captivity? You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. there are, I know for a fact, there's seven appointed feast days, you know? So mm -hmm. anything else outside of that? Like, for instance, let me ask y'all this. What does everybody feel about birthdays? What does, mm -hmm. what does the Bible truly say about that? Because I've heard that it's a pagan self-worship. And then I've heard people say, no, you're giving honor to the most high because you reached it. Or if other people are just blessing you, it's okay. What do y'all mm -hmm. feel about that? The birthdays? Oh, this is well. We, we just had a, a discussion about this um, uh, about a few weeks ago, my wife and I and our family and everything. And uh, what I would say about the birthdays is that if you do research into like the blowing out the candles, the circle of cakes and things of that nature, they do mm -hmm. have pagan ties to it. Mm -hmm. But I, I don't, I, I don't believe that it's wrong for one to acknowledge their birthday and to do something special on their birthday. I mean, in the book of Psalms, and my mother-in-law brought this verse out to us. In the book of Psalms, David said, "Teach me to number my days that I may uh, climb my." heart to wisdom. So right. by right. numbering your days, I mean that's how we keep up with numbering our days. That's how we keep up with our age. And, and, mm -hmm. and you know, for us as Israelites, Hebrew Israelites, um, you know, it's very important for us to do that because then, you know, that teaches us that we should apply ourselves even more to the wisdom of the Most High. You know, I think it's mm -hmm. very important that we, that, that, that we do that in w w whatever shape or form that might be for you, you know, allow the Spirit to lead and guide mm -hmm. you, you know, in, into doing that. But... You know, as it relates to birthdays, how they're modernly kept or even kept in, in times of antiquity, you know, those things, how they did it were uh, to uh, uh, worship their gods and their, mm. their uh, mighty ones. But the reason why we do it is for a totally different reason. You know, it's not to uh, promote mm. self-brandizing. We're just thanking the most high for allowing us to see, uh, you know, another day. You know, I, I had a oh, friend, Jesus. a very close friend of mine in the faith. You know, he was a my best friend, um, we grew up together, we played instruments together, we grew up in the same Hebrew, it was like the Simony, and he died at the age of 36 from a, uh, he, he used to suffer from um, migraines, he had a stem, he, the, the, the doctor said he had a stem, brain, uh, brain stem uh, a stroke from a severe mm -hmm. migraine that he had, and he was paralyzed from his head all the way down, only thing he could do was move his eyes, you know, he was 36 years old, a very vibrant man that loved his family, loved y'all, loved his kids. And when I when I think about that, you know, that it makes me think about that. And I am grateful to the most high that I'm still around. You know, I'm mm -hmm. grateful to the most high that I still have life. I'm grateful to the most high that I can come home and see my children and hug my wife. And every year that he gives me another year, you know, it teaches me that I need to walk, walk more wisely towards the most high. And as I grow older, you know, I'm growing more closer to death. You know, I'm growing more closer to a time whereby that appointed time where it's going to be time for me to, uh, you know, stand before my maker. So that that teaches me to, uh, to, to, to pursue the most high even more, you know. Come on, come on. I, 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 like, I like the way you said that. I, I love it because uh, this, this past, on the 16th of this month, the Heavenly Father allowed me to be on this earth for 60 years. Wow. 60 years. Where I come from, I come from this community in Los Angeles. It's called Watts. Mm. And I was going to funerals and seeing people die ever since I was in the second grade. 
It's yeah. just not. It's not uncommon for me to see white sheets. We we put white sheets on dead bodies and in watch. Mm-hmm. We've seen people get murdered, popped all the time, and um, the 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 only real um, uh, birthday, if I had to say, from a paganistic standpoint, was when I turned twenty one years old because my life expectancy went up almost sixty five to seventy percent because I just made it to twenty one years old because people wow. were being murdered all the time and so um so so what i did this past on this day i gave the highest praise to the most high i told him thank you so much i said you know i'm only here because of you period i I didn't have nothing else to say because i see a lot of people and i see a lot of younger people uh, just leaving this place body Mm -hmm. failures you know, um, uh, of sicknesses, distress, you know. Um, so I was, I was, I'm very humble in my spirit. So I agree with everything that's being said right now. It's, yeah, uh, come on. I agree. Yeah. 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 We're, we're respect- definitely on the same page. Yeah. To, to, to worship false gods, which is a violation of the commandments. I'm not with it. I'm not yeah. with it. You know, um, I'm going to give him praise for allowing me. But in terms of the other stuff, I'm, no, I will not support it. So, yeah. mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What I do on my birthdays is uh, I don't throw parties. I don't buy cake, birthday cakes. I don't light candles. Uh, mm-hmm. What I do is I spend that whole day just spoiling myself. And I make sure to call my That's mother great. and tell her, right. thank you for giving, for birthing me because she almost died when mm-hmm. she had me. So every oh, year for my birthday, I tell her, thank you. Give her her roses, right. and I be I treat myself to whatever I want to eat and get my nails done, hair, whatever, and that's it. And um, I make sure not to violate um, Abba's laws by self worship yeah, and right. having other people worshiping me on that day. Right, exactly. Um, that's right. That's right. I pretty much agree with everything y'all saying. I'm about to say, well, I'm I'm out of one, by the way. Peace and blessings. Shalom. Shalom, brother. Shalom. I'm about to say, yeah, for me personally, when my soul day come around, I just get I just give praise to the most high. I go walk out in nature, eat some fruit, earth a little bit. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah, yeah, you picture you you go barefoot in the grass like I do. Yeah, 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 man. It's, it's, it's definitely it's definitely an intimate moment, man. You feel rejuvenated out the word. Oh, like my I got some baby a lot. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh-huh. uh, sister so Adar, I, uh-huh. Adar. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I I didn't mean to cut anybody off. I was just thinking. Um, yes, the feast days. I could get a list out to you if you're uh, wondering when uh when when basically when me and my family were going to be. Keeping the feast days. As a matter of fact, me, my wife and I were talking about maybe trying to do something online, like an online Zoom mm-hmm. for those who want to participate, you know, for the feast days and things of that nature. Because mm-hmm. I do know that there are a lot of people who don't have like uh, assemblies and mm-hmm. people to fellowship mm-hmm. with. And we're just so spread out, far and few, you know, in between a lot of times, you know, it's hard to travel and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. we, we can work yeah. on something like that if that's. Oh yeah, okay. I would appreciate that because you know, like I said, I think the only one I have mastered to this point is the Day of Atonement and mm-hmm. um, Passover. <laughs> yes, <I> just, yeah. <laughs> you know? so that, yeah. I yeah, I would definitely appreciate that. Yeah. You know, yeah. and you know what? Since we were talking about the uh, pagan things, um, um, and you know, it is this pagan holiday right now. Um, I also want to ask about, um, some people ask me, like, I've I've had this conversation with some of my Christian friends. Um, they believe Sunday is the Sabbath, right? Mm -hmm. And I know we, some of us do Sabbath on what we call Saturday. Some of us may do Monday. I know some people even do it on Wednesday, but of all the different ones, nobody wants to, doesn't do it on Sunday. So what would be something that I could tell them to help them understand why Sunday is not the Sabbath. Because it's sun God worship. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
And our calendar that we're on is pagan. You know, correct me if I'm wrong. The Gregorian calendar is pagan. You're right. Uh, right. In Genesis 1, 14, as well as Sarat. But um, that's basically just saying how we observe the observe the moon. Uh, you know, that's that sets up the appointment point in time. All praises. Mm -hmm. Genesis 1 and 14 to 15. Yeah. Yeah. You know, even the, um, you know, the names and things of the days, things of that nature are, you know, accredited to uh, pagan deities and things of that nature. When I, when, when I say to people um, that observe Sunday, you know, and sometimes you have to be a little tact tactical in how you, you know, say things and word things. But, uh, you know, uh, the common, the common um, answer that I get from people like that, they'll say, well, you know, I, I I worship the Most High on every day, you know, and I tell them, I said, that's good, and you're supposed to worship the Most High every mm -hmm. day. But there is a day that he set aside for us to cease from our own work, cease from our own labor, and to focus on solely worshiping him. You know, he give us six days to do whatever we got got, got going on. We can do mm -hmm. it, you know. But he only yeah. asked one, one day out of, out of a week you know, and you can't give them that one day, you know, and, uh, you know, and I just tell them the benefits of, it. you know, it's beneficial to spend time mm -hmm. with your family. You can unwind from the stress of the rat race, and you know, the, the monotony of having to uh, work and provide for your children, for your family, and things of that nature, you know. Come. It's a good reset, you know, just try it out, mm -hmm. you know. Just try it, you know, that's how I put it to them, mm -hmm. you know. Just try it, you know. And, um, uh, I remember a testimony. There was a brother that, uh, you know, he was keeping the Shabbat. He was just coming to not keeping the Shabbat, but he had a job that was on uh, Saturday. So um, uh, I wrote him a little letterhead, you know, explaining, you know, how, you know, the Shabbat day was a, you know, a religious day for him and everything. He took it to the job. Now, the job required him to work on Saturday and things. And, you know, I told him to pray about it. I told him don't go in there you know, with a bad attitude, just explain to them that this means a lot to you. And you still want to fulfill your obligations to them as, you know, uh, as a worker, you know, but you're just at requesting and asking them to let you have this day off, you know, to worship the most high. And, and when he did that, that the, he went to the, the boss and talked to the boss about it. And then the boss went and talked to the whole company and all the workers that asked him, would y'all rather uh, take off on Saturdays, you know? And there was a consensus from everybody saying, yes, we, we want to take off on Saturday. So they allowed the workers to not come into work on Saturday just based on, you know, his obedience to the word of the Most High and just, you know, going in there with the right spirit and being prayerful and things of that nature. So, you know, there's great blessings and benefits. You know, I share that testimony with uh, individuals to show them that, you know, when you begin to work, uh, when, you, when you begin to set your heart sincerely to do uh, things uh, that the Most High commands us to do, then not only will he set you free, but, you know, it opens open up a door for other people to be set free also in that process, you know, if it's God's um, will. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> And plus, keeping that Sabbath day is symbolic to him and everybody around us that we belong to him. He says a, a sign between me and you. I think believe that's Exodus uh what 31. Right. Yeah, yeah, set apart day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a commandment, mm -hmm. not a choice. Yeah. You know, now that you, you say yeah. set apart, yeah. um, Mm -hmm. That also leads me to this then also because you know we are also we often call ourselves set apart, you know what I mean? Um refer to ourselves as set mm -hmm. apart. And um, you know, I was looking up Kodesh, you know, and that's part of one of the um descriptive words for set apart. So mm -hmm. because of that set apartness, I've heard some say, you know, that you need to cut off. Everybody like, oh, you got Christian friends, you do, you, know, you got to cut them off. You got to cut all these people off. So in this truth, 
is it law? You know, because we, we're supposed to be doing the law, statute, commandments of the most high, not just what we feel or think, right? So is mm -hmm. it a law telling us that if you come into this truth, if once you realize you're an Israelite, you're supposed to cut everybody off who's not an Israelite? I don't believe. Uh, I, don't. I don't believe either. Can I say something real quick? Oh, no. oh, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, so the word of God is truth, according to Psalms 86, 11, you know, Psalms 119, 160, John 17, 17. Long story short, the word of God is truth. But John 3, 21 says, but he that does truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they are raw in God. So ultimately, um, we don't, we, we don't want to just cut people off. We kind of want to meet them where they're at. And I'm not saying like dumb down the truth. I'm, I'm like, if someone still says Jesus, you know, we still can we still can have a conversation with him. We should still be able to meet him there because we was there at once. You know, we didn't know the holy days either. You know, um, now when they even when it comes to the Sabbath thing, when I when I speak to my Christian friends, whatever, when not, you know, I meet with them on the Lord's day to, to talk to them about the scriptures. And um, I showed them that we we use we go based off the moon. But the main thing is. They're not going to want to go off that moon unless they are able to identify with them scriptures for themselves that they mm -hmm. are Israelites. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, being a child of the light, you know, ultimately that's our birthright. You know, Colossians mm -hmm. 1, 1, 12, 13 and 1 Thessalonians 5, 5. That is our mm -hmm. birthright to be a child of the light. And that's why we see a lot of Israelites who don't have that light because they have not accepted or have not learned Yahweh Shah. They don't have the spirit of the spirit of the most high God through him. But yeah, not not to keep going, but thing is, like you were saying about the truth, why is it called the truth? It's because mm. the most high God established truth in the Shemayo. And I'm talking about I'm talking about truth is everywhere. You know, truth is everywhere. And and for us to literally be like, well, I'm gonna cut, I'm gonna cut this group off, the Muslims off, I'm gonna cut the Christians off, I'm gonna cut the atheists off. They all believed in the truth at once. And, and each one of those religions has the truth. But it's the thing where we oh, have baby. to know. We have to know it for ourselves so that we can show them like, yo, it's error in this religion. Like I talk to my Muslim friends all the time about the Quran. Like, do you know in the Quran it says you can beat your wife? It don't say oh, no. Baby. They don't say that. They don't say that in the Bible. Why would you want to follow this religion? <laughs> it said you can beat your wife if she gets because I, I used to study. I used to study. I used to study. I was in Islam at one time. Um, Egyptology, Kemet, you know, the most high led me down a, 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 a strenuous path where I can know what I did not need to get sucked in. Like even in new age, I had to learn new age to a certain degree because mm -hmm. Satan is all up in new age. But, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, um, Hebrews 10, 26, I'm going to say this before I get off. For if we sin willfully after that, we have received the knowledge of the truth, the knowing of the truth that remains no more sacrifice for sins. So yep. once we show individuals the truth, now I ain't saying they just gonna have it like that because this is spiritual warfare. You know, it's all spiritual. Like the enemy, like mm -hmm. like ultimately we have free will. We we still make our own decisions and whatnot. But the enemy is still the prince of power of the air. The enemy still had bring thoughts our way to keep us divided for a little bitty stuff like this. But if we allowed the word of God to be ultimate truth, like Titus three nine, we shouldn't even be arguing over the scripture. Titus three nine. That is the truth. Yeah. Like. How are we going to argue about it? We're going to be able to say a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for light this day. For these brothers that you allowed to gather right now, we counsel out the plan, plot, and scheme of Satan. And name Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. And if we had that intent every meeting, then Satan can't get in the midst of nothing. Right. Nothing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You so, preach. Yeah, I, I just want to <laughs> say that a little bit. All praise the most high. Yeah. All yeah, praise that was good. That was good. Come mm -hmm. on. Well said. Oh, yeah. Okay, one more thing. I'm not supposed to say this too. Okay, so I know how y'all was talking about feast of dedication. Um, feast of dedication, Hanukkah, Hanukkah, mm -hmm. feast of dedication. So the Messiah speaks about it in John 10 22, how he was on Solomon's porch during the feast of dedication. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, um, first Maccabees 4 56 speaks of that same, that same feast day because that's where it yeah. came about. It came about during during Rome time. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's not the it's not the wrong with it, you know what I'm saying? Um, I don't see anything wrong with it. You know, we I think we should embrace that as well as Purim, um, mm -hmm. Esther. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we can give each other gifts yeah. all to the praise, glory in the most high, you know. No, February. Elder. February of February. February. Huh? Uh Purim. 
Nah, what well, it was most people saying Purim was during this month, but it just depends on it just depends though. It depends on if you go out the lunar, if you go off the moon, or if you go based off, you know. I think most people go off the scriptures, like how scriptures say in this 12th month. I know this month like is month that. 10. This mm. is month 10, so it's in two more months on the 14th to 15th day. On month 12. So this is month 10. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Well, you done so are we supposed to do something for the um the 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 Hebrew New Year? Are we supposed to observe that a certain way? Passover. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a new moon day. So yeah, it's a mm -hmm. Now uh yeah, this is uh our path well being Yaakov. Yeah, I want to say that um I don't necessarily keep like Hanukkah and uh uh a Purim. But I not uh, I'm not in objective uh, or opposition to anyone that do, you know. I tell individuals that you know, if it's something that the ruach of the spirit is leading you to do, and uh, to observe, then you know, do it because it's it's scriptural. You know, you can't uh, speak against the scriptures or anything of that nature. Uh, on those days, on those mm -hmm. days, you know, we do have like a prayer or something like that. We don't mm -hmm. do like the traditional type of things in that way. But, uh, you know, I mainly focus on the uh, biblical, you know, the uh, beast that the Most High is, uh, has commanded us to, you know, observe mm -hmm. and things of that nature. But like the Yacht was saying, like even I have brethren that keep the Lunar Shabbat, even though I don't uh, subscribe to the Lunar Shabbat. But I have brethren that I love and respect who keep the Lunar Shabbat. And if I'm fellowshipping with them and it's their Shabbat, I observe it with them. And mm -hmm. likewise, likewise with them as well. We don't find it as a, you know, of course we have discussion. We talk, we've talked about it, but, you know, uh, for me, it's more so someone's spirit, their sincerity, you know, their uh -huh. realness, you know, in the uh -huh. talk, you know, are you living what you're teaching? Are you living what you believe, you know? And uh -huh. I look for the fruit, you know, above all things and, if I'm walking in ignorance concerning that matter, I pray that the Most High give me understanding and revelation concerning that, and that in, if I'm wrong, if I die in error or something like that, that the Most High will have mercy, you know, upon me in regards to things. Because, you know, the scripture says that we know in part, we prophesy in part, but when that which is complete or perfect, when it does come, then we're going to know all things. And when Yahshua comes, we all going to seek the mount of Yahweh. He's going to teach us his ways, you know. And, uh, you know, I think that it's very important that as believers that we understand that, you know, not 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 one camp or assembly or one person has the totality of truth, but that we can learn from each other. You know, we can learn uh, and uh, uh, observe, you know, each other's walk and say, you know, that's something beneficial that that brother is doing. You know, man, let let me incorporate that, you know. So, mm -hmm. you know, my walk these 30 years that I've been walking with the Most High has been a journey of, you know, just seeing other people's fruits and seeing the benefit of how other people do things. And if it's beneficial, then I incorporate that in my life. And that has been a great blessing, you know, uh, for me in regards to that as well. Um, hey, can I, can I add this? Mm-hmm. Uh, Sirach, um, Sirach Ecclesiastes chapter 43. Um, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna do verse two. The sun, when it appears, declaring at his rising a marvelous instrument, the work of the most high. And I'm gonna go to verse six and seven. He made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of times and a sign of the world. From the moon is the sign of the feast, a feast, a light that decreased in her perfection. So I just felt like that needed to be brought out. And um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, personally, I keep the lunar Shabbats as well. But uh, if if I gather with my brothers and sisters and they do it on Saturdays, I gather with them. Yeah, me too. Me too. Uh -huh. All yeah, I, I gather with a few different brews. You know, I've been trying to bring us, uh, you know, bring us together. It's been, it's been, it's been, it's been a challenge, but um. Uh, yeah, I'm is. working on it. <laughs> <laughs> working. Yeah. I'm working overtime. Yeah, yeah. Now I do. I do want to say that I do use the moon 
and things of that nature as far as the cycle of the feast days, the more, more of them set apart uh, uh, days of the Most High as well, too, you know. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like I stated, you know, um, I think it's very important for us to, you know, uh, make sure that we're, you know, who, whoever we're fellowshipping with, you know, because, you know, uh, there's so many different doctrines and beliefs and systems and yeah. things of that nature. You know, I think it's very important that we examine each other's fruit, you know, and find oh, yeah. find find that, that point of reasoning whereby we can fellowship with each other, that we can break bread with each other, that we can love each other, because at the end of the day, we're all brothers and sisters. We're all Israelites. And, and uh, right. I'm so glad to hear that, you know, among this uh, uh, Zoom meeting, because there's so many people that will cut you off, that will uh, disown you and, and say that you're not a true Israelite because you may not adhere to a certain thing that they believe mm -hmm. or a certain thing that they teach. I believe that if it's not, if it's not salvational issue, if it's not a uh, salvational thing whereby one is blaspheming the Ruach or the Spirit of the Most High or, uh, or willfully, like the brother said, willfully walking in transgression, knowing that mm -hmm. they should do something, you know, because even the scripture talks about the sin of ignorance, you know, sin through ignorance. And we're not talking about willfully ignorant, but just not knowing or just not understanding or not uh, coming to a certain uh, revelation of, of truth, you know. You know, and there's mercy and grace for those individuals as well, too. So I'm glad to hear that, uh, you know, in this particular Zoom meeting. That's a great blessing. So I say, uh -huh. out to y'all. Yeah, because yeah. I, I, I really want to see more unity coming amongst the Israelites. We need more unity. And so in order to accomplish that, we all have to learn how to overlook our differences. And I yeah. do understand that scripture says, how can two walk together except they agree? I believe that's Amos 3 and 3, correct? Mm -hmm. Um, How can we walk together except we agree? So as long as we agree that we can keep the commandments, that's good enough for me. Yes, me too. Me too. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of those commandments, you know, um, a lot of our truth is definitely um, based upon the foundation of the law. And there's a lot of laws, right? So, yeah. and again, it go, I go back to when I was speaking on people force feeding so much all at once, being 613 laws, <laughs> but <A lot>. um, <laughs> wouldn't you think the better way would be to first get them to uh, embrace the Ten Commandments and then go into all the different laws? Because not every law applies to every person, because, you know, there's laws for women, there's laws for marriage. There's laws for ministry, you know. So mm -hmm. telling someone, you got a 613 laws, but to get these laws, these laws. And it's like, not even every law applies to, you know, right. I mean, because what, you know what I mean? So, like, mm -hmm. wouldn't the best foundation be to start with the Ten Commandments? Because it's kind of like a condensed, if you can master them. Because some of us haven't even mastered the Ten because, you know, you go back to keeping the Sabbath. You know what I mean? You true. haven't even You're mastered the keeping command. the Sabbath yet. You know what I mean? So yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. I would I would say this 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 hot path. Well, I would say that uh, for me, um, for for my understanding, that uh, trying to teach people to embrace the ten, which are the ten fundamentals. I call I say the ten fundamentals are the foundation of uh, all the precepts and statutes. I believe they stem from the ten commandments. Oh, so if you if if we if we could just get people to understand uh that uh understand the, the ten commandments and 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 keep and keeping them that everything else will fall into suit. But I also believe that there are commandments in the law, ceremonial things and things of that nature that really don't that don't apply to us today as it being uh fulfillment that Yahshua has fulfilled those things. I believe it's in the book of Acts it says that uh, the apostle said that uh, the Most High has, uh, Yahshua has uh, justified us from the things that we, that, the law, that we could not be justified in the uh, law. So there are some things that the law teaches us to practice and things that nature that, uh, that Yahshua has justified us from uh, adhering to those things, such as 
the uh, uh, sacrificial laws, per se, we, you know, we say that. Now, uh, the laws that I keep outside the Ten Commandments are these, uh, the civil laws. And I think, I think we need a lot, I think we need a lot of teaching on that too, the civil laws, dietary laws, mm -hmm. and the, uh, uh, you know, the laws concerning the peace and uh, things of that nature. But even when you read Leviticus chapter 23, you know, there's certain ceremonial things that were done uh, under uh, the uh, Levitical order that, you know, of course we don't, uh, we, we don't uh, sacrifice uh, bullocks or lambs or anything of that nature. Uh, you know, so, some people may make fires and stuff like that, but uh, those things are more of a spiritual uh, implication as it relates mm -hmm. to the shadow uh, of the first coming and also the shadow of the second coming of Yahshua, the Messiah. So, yeah, I, I think there has to be a demarcation even in that. But, uh, yeah, yeah. So that's 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 my understanding. Speaking on that dietary law um, and like going back to the feast days. So on uh, like you were saying about the sacrificing of the uh, animals. On the feast day, um, Passover, for instance, I know some camps I've seen people do the lamb. They still, they'll sacrifice the lamb, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I know that part of the, um, when you read to what to do on Passover, it did speak on getting the lamb and, um, you know, quickly cooking the lamb, eating your bitter herbs and so forth, right? Mm -hmm. But this is where I had a very hard issue this year was because I gave up meat. Mm -hmm. You know, and I told the most high, I just don't want to have meat no more. Right. Yeah. But I too. really warred with that because I'm like, ah, oh, am I supposed to still eat just a little bit of lamb on Passover? Like, would I be in violation? Because I told the most high I'm giving up meat. I said, Abba, I don't right. want meat no more. So right. let, me, let me say this. The, the most high told you not to eat meat anymore. And your spirit, res your soul resonated with that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Right. Huh. Right. Same here. I gave up meat this year and this Passover, I didn't do lamb because I uh, view it as Hamasha came and, and he already paid that price for us. So I had Passover dinner without a lamb, without the lamb. Yeah, me yeah. too. I, I yeah. only do my chickpeas and my unleavened um, onion culture bread, you know, with the onions in it. Oh, it's mm -hmm. really, really good. It's really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is this is our path well. Yeah, I um sister Addy, I don't know if you remember, um, uh, I think it was uh earlier this year you had wrote me about that uh mm -hmm. question and everything. And the example that I think I remember that I gave you was about the Nazarite vow. And uh -huh. you know, and when when you when when the most high puts something in your spirit and you, you make that vow to the most high. Then you know you have to you have to um, uh, follow through with it. And mm -hmm. just uh, for an example, like the Nazarites didn't eat grapes and they didn't drink wine. And culturally, at the Passover and um, uh, feast days, mm -hmm. you know, people would drink wine. They would celebrate with wine. But being that the Nazarite would have taken that vow, then uh, that wine would have been uh, forbidden for him to do because he was underneath a oath to the Most High. So. Yeah, I I agree with that as well. Now, my wife is a uh, is vegan. She's veg uh, vegan, and mm -hmm. I was vegan for about I would say about 10, 11 years. But uh, you know, during Passover, we do eat a little bit of lamb. We don't gorge ourselves on it, but we do eat a little bit of lamb just for the, the symbolic nature of it. But mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I don't judge anybody in meat or drink or anything like that because I understand that the substance of these feast days are all pointing us back to Messiah. So if one uh, wants to eat it, then, you know, praise Yah, Todah Yah. As long as it's done in the spirit, as long as it's done, you know, according to the uh, uh, the word of the Most High, that's fine. One uh, don't want to eat it, you know, and, and they say Yahshua is enough for me, you know, and I mm -hmm. understand the spiritual symbolism behind it. I mean, that's that's equally the same, you know. I say Toda and praise the Most High on that, you know, because you know there may probably will come one day where we won't even have a lamb to eat and things of that nature. We're gonna have to forge yes. herbs and stuff like that. 
what are we going to do? We're going to have to keep it by faith, you know, keep it by the rule. keep it by the spirit of the most high. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I agree with all of it. It's, it's sounding really good to me. It's really, uh, Resonating with yeah. my ruah, with my spirit. So I say, tell that, yeah. Uh, you, know, you know, speaking, speaking of, um, mm -hmm. oh, Salah here. <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> I was just going to throw in there, uh, I just thought about the ancient Israelites, how they were in their captivities. There's seven of them. And we, mm -hmm. we all know that we're in the seventh captivity. They all kept the, they kept the holy days and the statutes in their captivities, come to think mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. So that means we need to be keeping them too. That's right. That's right. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So when you were speaking of the wine, um, how you know that that was part of the ancient, you know, they would drink the wine, and I think people still do it today. Um. But I had a question too on that. I don't personally drink. But I remember my sister was speaking about a fellowship she belonged to at one time. And um, she was saying how, like, after Sabbath, they was turning up, you know? She was oh, like, yeah. you know, they was getting towed Ooh, up. I People were about. smoking. <laughs> they they earned, oh, you know? Yeah. She was like, wait, oh, hold yeah. up. <laughs> so oh, yeah. I'm trying I, to understand. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't do these things, but I know there may exactly. be some who do. Yeah. What is the... Is it forbidden yeah. for people to have their herb and they drink? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I want to say if I if I could say something on this right quick, then I I give the floor to everybody else. Uh, for me, I don't drink wine as well too. You know, I I don't drink wine. Uh, one of the reasons why I don't drink wine because uh, when I was uh, two years old, my mother told me that a prophet told her that the Most High was calling me at a young age and that I would be uh, used by him. And I shouldn't drink any strong drinks. So I didn't, I haven't, I don't drink wine, things of that nature. Uh, okay, second thing, listen. I don't really see, I don't really see the benefit, you know, uh, mentally in doing such. I mean, some people might find joy or pleasure in it, but I mean, that's for them, you know. But when it comes to Shabbat services and things of that nature, you know, I've seen people get so intoxicated that when they stand up, they do the two step, you know. And I think, <laughs> I think that the Shabbat or any spiritual gathering should not be about drunk drunkenness, banqueting, raveling, things of that nature, that we should be solely focused on uh, serving the most high and that people, if you're going to do that, do it in discretion in your own household, right, you know, do it in discretion in your own household. You know, I never want to because be, be, because uh, I've, I've learned down through the years that, you know, your reputation or how you present yourself. It's very important, you know, and I never want anybody or a young believer to ever see me drunk or intoxicated or uh, uh, saying something, you know, uh, off the wall because I'm not in the right frame of mind. Uh, there was an elder in my younger years of this walk who always encouraged me to be sober, vigilant, cold sober, you know, and I practiced that being cold, sober, being vigilant. That doesn't mean I don't laugh or, you know, or, or rejoice with my brothers or sisters or fellowship and things of that nature, but there's a level of soberness that, especially those who profess to be mores and leaders and things, have to uh, exemplify, you know. And uh, as far as the we situation, things of that nature, I, I don't believe that we was ever meant to be smoked. You know, I do believe that there are municipal purposes behind it if it's used in this natural state you know it's beneficial because it is a herb but the way that the world has abused it and used it to get high and to take them out of the element of, uh, of reality if i may use that term you know or to different levels of uh, 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 uh i would say maybe uh, demonic influences and things of that nature i don't think that's of god you know if Anything is done, it should be done in moderation and with careful prayer and consideration. I agree. Mm -hmm. hmm. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. You know, I have so many um, questions here. I know we won't get to them all, but I'm trying to hit the important ones. Um, so in this walk, you know, there's a lot of talk of who's the real Israel versus the Gentile. and um, also, who's going to get in and who's not going to get in. Um, 
when it comes to the Gentile and the Israel and who's getting into the kingdom, can non-Israelites or, you know, non-melanated people, I should say, who are, um, but who embrace this truth, can they still make it into the kingdom? Acts, Acts chapter two for that. Mm -hmm. But um, I want to say, well, mm -hmm. not what I want to say, but what I observe from scripture, they will be on our new earth. Mm -hmm. They won't mm -hmm. be in our kingdom though. Mm -hmm. Cause mm -hmm. see the kingdom is going to be for us. Daniel 7, 18. And this kingdom shall be no end. The precept of that is Luke 1, 33, or Loa Yacus 133. He shall reign over the house of Jacob, and this kingdom shall be no end. So um, ultimately, what I'm understanding is that we'll reign on this thing, and they're going to be here to serve us. They're not going to be in our kingdom, though. Those mm -hmm. those gates, and specifically for Judah, Benjamin, Levi, and Epitale, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I do want to say, too, I, I agree. Um, of course, of course, I, of course, the, uh, the uh, I don't have the full contextual perspective of what the brother is saying, but as far as what he's saying, uh, to a certain degree, I, I I believe that as well. Uh, I believe that the kingdom that is to come is specifically for the nation of Israel for the twelve tribes. So we see that in Revelation, there are twelve gates to the city, and uh, just as it was like with the tabernacle, you know, they had an outer court, inner court, and the holy of holiness. And, and certain individuals weren't able to go into uh, certain places within the tabernacle. I believe that's the way that the kingdom is going to be. But the kingdom is not going to be as, it's, it's not going to be this racial um, uh, 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 demographic that we see that certain camps are pushing this narrative. You know, the kingdom, uh, uh, I believe that it will, uh, the new earth, like we said, the new earth, uh, will be for all who have placed their faith in Yahshua the Messiah and who are uh, keeping the commandments. But as the scripture states, salvation is of the Israelite first, then to the Gentile. Yah's main priority is his chosen people because he chose us for a reason. He, he calls us his people for a particular reason, you know. So when the, uh, when the, when the new kingdom comes, the kingdom, we're going to rule on this earth. We're going to be rulers, kings and priests on this earth. And there will be the other nations that make it through the great tribulation. Uh, that are the residue that's left. Uh, we're going to uh, rule and reign over them, you know, and as the scripture says, they would be our service. But when we look at service to in Torah, service to uh, for other nations is not the same thing that we went through uh, as a byproduct of our disobedience against the Most High, you know, as Israelites, we're supposed to treat our servants with respect, dignity, and with love. You know, we're not supposed to abuse them and misuse them in any way, shape, or form. You know, and I think the narrative that's being pushed with a lot of these camps is the opposite. You know, they're teaching people, "Oh, I'm going to step on your head, and I'm going to beat the hell out of you." And, I'm going to, the same way you, I'm, I'm, I'm going to rape you just like you raped my, you know, it's not going to be none of that in the kingdom. You mm -hmm. know, to, you know, a, a, a rape, a rape is not, uh, 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 it's against the commandments of the most high. You know, you, you're not supposed to rape anybody. You're not supposed to misuse or abuse anybody, no matter what nation they are. And like I said, in Shabbat lesson, to, on the Shabbat, Caleb, when we look at Caleb, Caleb was not an Israelite. He was not a natural born Israelite. But by faith, you know, by faith, he was an Israelite in his ruach, in his spirit. And the Most High used him in such a great way to assist uh, 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 Joshua in uh, leading the children of Israel into the promised land. And Joshua and Caleb, out of the older generation, you know, they were the only two that made it into the promised land. All the other older generation were cut off, you know, and Caleb was a part of that, you know. And we see within our whole nation, you know, there were people that fought alongside us in our wars, even with David, that were Hittites and Jebusites and of other nationalities, you know. So our, 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 our when we look at the, 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 the outline in Torah, we were always supposed to open 
our gates to the sojourners and to the strangers. And when you look at that word sojourner in the Hebrew, it is ger, ger. And that means an alien, a non-Israelite, you know. If there's a non-Israelite that comes into our midst and wants to serve the Most High, the scripture clearly says, as we are, so shall they be, you know. And, you know, I think that that's a very important thing that we need to teach as well, too, and not discriminate uh, against other people if they want to learn our ways, learn our culture, understand who we are. You know, we're supposed to go out and teach all nations. He, he didn't say he didn't say uh, uh, not this nation or that nation. You know, the last commission that he gave his disciples before he left this earth was for them to go into all nations and teach all people, you know, because our people were scattered into all nations, you know. So if we go and preach it to our people, there are going to be others that's going to hear what we're preaching to our people. And if they, if the Ruach moves upon them and they want to come underneath our headship and our authority, then we are to teach them the ways of the Most High so that they may serve the Most High the same way that we serve the Most High. And that's, that's the way I look at it. Okay. Acts chapter 2. Go ahead. I was going to say Acts chapter 2, verse 39. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord or Yahweh, our God, our power, shall call. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a, a covenant that's given to us. But like he said, you know, they will be in the midst of us. Just like I, like I think me and him probably see, um, see differently when it comes to them being in our, our actual kingdom, like our actual palace, you know. I think we see differently when it comes to that because, you know, the most high word doesn't contradict itself. And I'm not saying that you're saying that, but when I, when I read Corinthians where he says separate from among them and I will call you my sons and my daughters, you know what I mean? They're unclean. You know, obviously is the, if we stay around them, we're going to be um, influenced. You know, if you stay around demons long enough, you're going to be influenced by them. They're going to, you know, you sit at the table of demons, you're going to become one. You know what I'm saying? So um, ultimately I say all that to say this, that uh, hmm. yeah, is is uh, is he still there? I think we lost him. No, nah, I'm 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 still here. I'm still here. I'm still, oh, I'm still okay, I'm still okay, here. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah okay. I'm still here. I'm still here. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I just I just I feel some. I, I'm a, I'm an empath, so I kind of feel somebody in the room. I feel like turbulence based off something that I said that probably got somebody feeling off. But there's nothing to be triggered about. Like I said, we agree oh, to no, the no, same. No. No, Dang. I would say I would say just to clarify, I do agree with your point as far as the kingdom itself, the palace itself, the New Jerusalem itself will be for the Israelites. I agree with that. But uh, just to clarify that, you know, uh, when we talk about service to, you know, uh, as it relates to the other nation, it's not in the same um, uh, horrendous oh, yeah, I don't think it's yeah, uh, uh, yeah, um, the treatment that we've been treated. I'm saying that camps teach that. You know, okay. they, they teach their people that, you know, they're indoctrinating yeah. young men to think that they're going to be in the kingdom, you know, beating down their slaves and all that stuff. And when the you know Torah doesn't really teach that, that we are to teach that we are to uh, treat our slaves with dignity and re re with respect mm -hmm. and honor, you know, uh, and things of that what, nature, you know. But, uh, I think but, what but, they but, are but, using. But, yeah. Yeah. But what I, I will what, say that um, I, think I think it's in the book of Zechariah. It says that in those times, the uh, nations that are left. If they don't come up to Jerusalem to worship the king, that uh, that it won't uh, that there, it won't be any rain for them, you know. So uh, we do see passages of scripture whereby uh, the nations will be called to worship yeah. the Most High, you know, in the new earth, in the new heaven as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but as far as the rulership or the government ship of the new world, we will be the kings and priests. We will be ruling. We we will be in authority. Underneath the headship of uh, Hamashiach, you know, and yeah, and I, I just want to clarify I that, say, that I do agree with you on that point. Yes, most definitely. I appreciate yeah. you, Elder. I'm about to say, um, Ezekiel twenty five fourteen. This may be why a lot of the camps do it. Um, and I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel, because obviously the precept for that would be Obadiah one twenty one. How Savior should come out of Zion, and how you know we we all know that's the judgment of Esau. So right, exactly. there, yeah, I don't know why they would say that, that all that would be going down in the kingdom yeah. if we actually look at the scriptures in Revelation yeah. twenty one. There will be no yeah. more death nor sorrow. Exactly. So I mean, the, the uh, death on. will have to come before you know exactly. the kingdom. Exactly. You know, so. See now, this is this is a this is the point. You you made a very good point, and I'm glad you said that. 
Because we have to understand, like I, I've, I've been teaching in our Bible study, that there's a chronological and a sequential order to how Yah does things. When we're talking about the destruction of Edom, this is the judgment that Yah is doing to set the earth back in order. You know, after he sets the earth back in order and destroys Edom, and all nations are subdued, uh, that, that's the scripture that says in Psalms, clap your hands, all you people. Clap your hands to Yahweh. Shout unto Yahweh the voice of triumph, that he shall subdue the people under us, the nations under our feet. So that's what your Messiah is coming to do when he's coming. He's coming. His second coming is going to be him subduing all nations underneath our feet. But once the nation is subdued underneath our feet and Messiah is reign, reigning with a rod of iron, it's going to be a reign of peace, you know? It's going to be a reign of peace. So we're not going to have all this warring and fighting and all this stuff. People are going to be yeah. subjugated to the authority and to the rule of Yahshua HaMashiach until, uh, until Satan is loosed back out of his prison. Then the scripture says that he will go to Gog and Magog and deceive them again, and that would be the final battle. And after that, then it's going to be a reign of peace forever. The, the very mm -hmm. definition of Jerusalem, the very Hebrew definition of Jerusalem, one of the definitions is teaching peace. So Jerusalem was always supposed to teach shalom or teach peace, you know, mm -hmm. and that all nations will be subjugated underneath the rulership of peace because the Torah, the Torah uh, is a, a laws and statutes for us to maintain order and peace in our kingdom, even with other nations. And mm -hmm. uh, I understand that uh, sometimes in order to maintain peace or to have peace, you have to go to war. But mm -hmm. in the New Kingdom, the scripture says mm -hmm. that we're going to beat our swords into, plow, into uh, 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 instruments of farming in, in agriculture, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in the kingdom that is to come, the final objective is to maintain peace, that there wouldn't be no war, there, there would be no death, there would be no killing, there would be no misuse of any of anybody, of any kind or any race or any uh, 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 descent, you know. So, yeah, his reign is going to be a reign of peace. That's good. I can't yeah. wait, y'all. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm say, I got a, I got a verse to add to that, Elder. Yes, oh, what you were saying about the law of uh, Baruch, Baruch chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. This is the oh, book of the commandments of God and the law yeah. that endure forever. All that they keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. Turn yeah. you, O Jacob, from your claw and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof that you may be illuminated. Yeah. And matter of fact, yeah. it's, that same, it's that same passage of the chapter you were talking about earlier with Deuteronomy 32, where the Most High said, um, for you provoked him that made you by sacrificing to the devils and not to God. This is the same right. chapter for that. You were sold to the nation, not for your destruction, but because you moved God to wrath. You mm. were delivered. You made him I angry. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. speaking yeah. of the uh, kingdom, you know, what you were saying, of the things that wouldn't be going on, you know, there's been a lot of debate that I've noticed over the uh, years. Because um, originally when we thought to do this Zoom, we were wanting to help sisters, you know. But then, you know, we decided, you know, It'd be good for to open it up because there's a lot of people who need it. But concerning the sisters in the new kingdom, um, Isaiah three and four. Okay, we get a lot of this um, when it comes to the carnality of the new kingdom um, that they speak of the men with the multiple wives in the new kingdom. Um, like basically that we will basically, whatever we're doing now is what we're going to be doing in the kingdom and, you know, still marrying, having kids, this, that, and the third. But I do recall a passage, I don't know the verse verbatim, um, where the, I guess the scribes were asking uh, Yeshua uh, about this woman was married to this man and whose wife she going to be in the new kingdom. And he said they was not given into marriage, right? So mm -hmm. in the new kingdom, when it comes to this, as I, Isaiah 3, 4, where a lot of people are saying, you know, the men are going to be walking around with all these wives and, you know, still doing all of these things, you know, is that actually scriptural? Yeah, that's a head scratcher right there. Oh, <laughs> uh, sister, sister, uh, yeah, 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 that's a, that's a good one. Uh, I would say, um, according to uh, scriptures and the things, my, the understanding that I've uh, come to understand over a period of time, it seems as though there's going to be different dispensations when the kingdom is established. We see that the uh, Messiah is going to reign for a thousand years. I believe that in the thousand year reign that there will be marriages and giving into marriage because the scripture says that a child will be able to will live to be with a hundred uh, uh, thousand years. So I can't remember that exact uh, uh, passage on that. Correct me if I'm wrong. But um, after the thousand year reign, um, there's going to be a time, as I just spoke previously, whereby uh, Satan will be loosed out of the pit. And there would be another great, great war 
uh, of the Gentiles against the uh, kingdom uh, that the most that uh, Yahshua has been reigning in for a thousand years. And then after that, then the scripture says that even Messiah himself will subjugate all authority and power back to the Father. And it's going to be a different time during that particular time. And from what I can understand and read the scripture is that during that time, that would be a time whereby there won't be no marriage or giving into marriage. Uh, the scripture says that we'll be like the uh, Melachim or the angels uh, in that particular time period. Uh, so as far as my understanding as of now, because we're, we're talking about deep things now. We're talking about some deep things here. But I deep. do say this. I do say this. And I, and I'm going to relinquish. I do say this, that uh, I tell my wife all the time, because um, not to boast or brag, it's all about the mercy of Yah, told I Yah. As I said that, you know, I was basically raised in this truth. So my wife and I, when we met each other, we were both virgins. So my wife is the only woman that I've ever known. I'm the only man that she's ever known, you know. That's and beautiful. I said, that I love her so much. <laughs> I love her so much that I pray to Yah. I pray, Yah, please, you know, let there be marriage in the kingdom because, you know, if, at, at that first resurrection when I rise, you know, as far as my mindset is, I'm going to be looking for my <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> so I'm going to be looking for my wife. But if, if I do, if there's a possibility that I can link up with somebody, I want it to be with my Isha that I'm with now, you know, and that's how that's I feel beautiful. about it. That is beautiful. You know, I'm just speaking mm -hmm. as a man, though. I'm just speaking as a man as possible. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that's my understanding. For the rest of us uh, singles out here, okay? <laughs> as far as that's concerned. <laughs> I, yeah. um, I got, I want to say something about yeah. that. Um, yeah, yeah, most definitely. All praises, all praises, Elder. That's beautiful, for real. I'm definitely rooting for y'all. I want a long life and, uh, you know, yes, blessings this thing for y'all family. But, uh, so, yeah, so I, I think I think what we should take into consideration is every time that the Messiah, when he did mention the kingdom, if he was talking about on earth or he was talking about the the the, the third heaven, if he was talking about where the father said type stuff, mm -hmm. you know, that's probably what we want to acknowledge every single time. Um, mm -hmm. And then, like my daughter said, it, it, I mean, for, that sound pretty much legit. You know, but when I read when I read Isaiah one to like chapter four, you know, um, all of it is during the end time. You know, that's that's the end time. So you know, um, like he said, far, furthermore, you know that I, I see us being, you know, with our with our women and whatnot. You know, what I'm mm -hmm. saying then, you know, the thousand year reign, we in our godly bodies. You know, by this time, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I don't necessarily see the father taking away. You know what our one of our first commandments was. You know to multiply. You know, I, don't, I don't. I don't see the father doing that. Like everything. Everything has to go back to Torah. You know, according to Psalms one nineteen, your word is the truth. You know what I'm saying? So y'all yeah, pray. That's all I want to say. Hallelujah. Oh, I can't argue with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. I have we a, a, take a part two and a part three and a part four. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why I said it's a lot of questions on here, and I know we're not going to uh, get to them all right now because it's so much to unpack. That's why I was saying, again, I got to go back to where I said, you know, there's so much to unpack. And a lot of times it's being try to give it to you at once to the point it's like it's too much. You know, I can't yeah. receive it all. But as you it's see, there, there's a lot of questions. And even like um you know my daughter she's on here she she's shy but me and her mm -hmm. kind of have this talk um a lot about like hebrew courtship you know uh yeah. how how to approach that because you know she's been in a few um hebrew groups on facebook um yeah. trying to court and you know she's had some traumatic experiences <laughs> in so. that in that area you know started. and i'm like even that even though people don't think it's that important but part of the culture and traditions of israelite has a lot also to do with the marriage because even marriage and relationships is how we see some verses in the bible shows our relationship to the most high like a husband and a wife you know I you. and yeah. i think we, oh, need that too. Too. we definitely need to be able to teach people because you got people coming into the truth too who um maybe were in certain type of relationships prior to coming into the truth they don't know i i was told um that if you were married to someone who wasn't in the truth this was like when i first came in and they don't want to come to truth they got you got to divorce them or that if you got married outside of the truth you got to get a divorce <laughs> because Lies. it's not honor yes i heard Lies. that a lot you know wow Lies. That that makes no sense because you know, like the scripture says, you know, death do us apart. That's right. That's right my brother. She can only remarry is only remarry in the Lord or the Don, 
Yahweh, Yahweh by Shemi Hawzai. That's the only way she can remarry. But you know, that's yeah. right. Hallelujah. Mm. Yes, yeah. I got a testimony I want to give on that, uh, and also I want to talk a little bit about Hebrew marriages because, uh, of course, I, you know, by uh, experience, I can speak on that. But um, there was a Ema. Uh, we called her Ema Dot. Uh, her name was uh, Deborah, and uh, you know, she was in. The, she'd been in the truth for many, many years, probably like 40, 50 years, and she had an unbelieving husband. You know. Uh, I remember a particular time that uh, her husband wanted to put up a Christmas tree. And she was like, uh, you know, I don't celebrate Christmas, baby. You know, this is your house. You know, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I just want to be participating in it. And because she didn't want to do it, he didn't, he didn't put the Christmas tree up. She didn't raise hair with him. She didn't, you know, dishonor him as her husband. And years went on. And uh, 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 this man, you know, throughout his 20s and 30s, you know, he remained an unbeliever, but when he got into his older years, into his 50s and 60s, he came into the truth. And he's been into the truth ever since then, you know, just because of her faithfulness, just because, you know, she didn't, uh, uh, um, uh, she showed him a, a life that was committed to the Most High, you know, and by her lifestyle, she was able to win him over. I've seen so many incidents where individuals come into this truth and they are impatient with their wives, you know, they're impatient with their uh, 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 family members, and they do some uh, horrendous things. I'm gonna tell you how another story, right? It was this brother. Brother uh, came into the truth, uh, but his wife just didn't, she didn't understand. And sometimes these brothers just don't know how to explain it. They don't know how to break it down to them, you know? But this brother just abruptly leaves his wife, divorces his wife. Years, years later, his wife comes into the truth. You know, his divorced wife comes into the truth, but he's with some other woman now, you know? So if he would have held on, you know, and, and did what was right by her, you know, that's a situation that could have been avoided. All the trauma, all the uh, 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 separation, the kids happen to go through that. The kids happen to see that, you know. So, mm. you know, I, I, I don't agree with that. I, I, I don't uh, support that. I think that, you know, situations like that have to be held in wisdom and understanding mm -hmm. that uh, whether a um, uh, wife or husband, that it's, a, that it's an obligation for them to uh, live a life that uh, uh, pleases the most high, whereby the other will see their change and see the way that they're living on life. I got one more thing I want to say. Uh, one, one more thing I want to say uh, concerning that particular thing. My mother-in-law, right? My mother-in-law tells this testimony all the time. She said that, you know, when uh, her and my father-in-law were in the world, you know, she was a very skeptical person when it came to like religion and things of that nature. My father-in-law gave his life to the Most High. He began to, the Most High changed his life, you know, drastically. He grew up in New York, he ran the streets, he did all kinds of things, you know, and the Most High changed his life. And uh, he didn't go home bashing her over the head, and preaching at her, and he just let his life reflect his, the change that the Most High was doing to him. He began to read the scriptures more, and then she would see him reading the scriptures and things of that nature, and that intrigued her, you know, and to want to see how this man went from night into day, you know? And a lot of times it just take, take that particular uh, heart and dedication more so than preaching and being, con uh, uh, being condescending and judgmental towards your spouse, you know? So uh, mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to say that uh, as far as uh, marriage and things of that nature, you know, uh, for me, I didn't get married until I was like 27 years old. And uh, the Hebrew country that I grew up in, a lot of the brothers that were my age at that time, 18, 20 years old, they were getting married, you know, they were getting married, having kids, and, you know, for me, I, you know, I just couldn't, I couldn't really connect with someone in that, in that way, you know, as far as that's concerned, so uh, what I did is, you know, I used to have a lot of anxiety about it, I used to be like, y'all, when, when it's going to be my turn, I'm going on 27 years old, I'm about 30 years old, I want a wife, I want children, I want to be an old man trying to have, you know, a family and stuff, I want to do it while I'm young. But um, I remember uh, when I submitted my desire for a wife to the most high and I stopped uh, uh, like just searching and trying to date this person, to date that person. And I just said, you know what, y'all, I'm going to wait on you. And I remember uh, there was a verse in Genesis where Abraham had sent his servant out to find a wife for uh, Isaac. And uh, the scripture clearly says that the servant prayed to the most high and said and, and asked the most high for certain signs for the mm. woman that he would pick for his uh, master's son. 
And when I saw that, I said, yeah, I'm going to do the very same thing. You know my heart. You know what type of wife I want, yeah. You know I'm a virgin. I'm seeking someone that's a virgin, you know, because my elder, my pastor at that time, Elder Moray, he was trying to hook me up with a lot of these, uh, you know, sisters that, you know, had prior, you know, relations and stuff like that. And for me, you know, I was kind of intimidated by that because I had no experience, you mm -hmm. know, in said thing, you know what I'm saying? I'm just, just, I'm just saying, you know, I have those, because I was kind of like intimidated by that, you know? But um, with that being said, I knew what God put in my spirit and I waited on the most high for that. And as soon as I waited for the most high, that's when I met my wife at a feast. They came to our uh, congregation at that time for Tabernacles. And when I saw her, I knew instantly that she was my wife to be. And I had, I was studying, I was preparing myself. I was looking at scripture concerning marriage. And one of the things that I saw is that, you know, it's the father's responsibility to give his daughter to a man. You know, it's not uh, like in this modern age, we're taught, oh, you're 18 years old. Go find you a, a boyfriend. Go find you a husband. Oh, you, you're an 18 year old boy. Go find you. I don't know, don't know kids, know, know nothing about no relationships at 18, 19, 17, even 20 years old. And that's why the marriages were conducted by the heads of the households, the father and the mothers of both parties. You know, they would mm -hmm. approve the spouse for their son or for their daughters because marriage, Hebrew culture, uh, marriage is a big thing. It's just not about the two people that get married, but it's about the families as well, too. You know, mm -hmm. because you're married into that family and vice versa. So the families have to have similar connection and similar objectives when it comes to life what they want for their children, all of that has to play into perspective, you know. And, uh, 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 you know, that's that's a word well, testimony for another time. But, yeah, um, I'm, I'm praying about doing a marriage series on that because I think that's very important. We don't have a lot of examples of that being no, practiced don't. that way in the Hebrew culture. What we see is a bunch of lustful men running around like cavemen, you mm -hmm. know, knocking sisters over the head, you know, and, and dragging them away to wherever it is they going to like the scripture says you know they crept into houses on the way and they leave silly women laden with sin away you know and mm -hmm. and i think that's something that needs to be taught among our people that we understand the oh. uh importance of uh fathers being in their daughter's life and being there to make sure that because at the end of the day if your daughter marries somebody that's not for her or not good to her for me as a father, I would feel that's my responsibility, that I let my daughter down, that mm. I didn't step in as a man being able to peak game and to see if this individual was somebody worthy of my daughter. That's one thing that I did with my father-in-law. You know, when I inquired of my wife, I went to him. I didn't go to my wife. I went to her father because I had read that in scripture. And mm. Be mm. Because, because we were already, uh, 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 my wife's father and I, at the uh, Feast of Tabernacles, which is like eight days, we spent a lot of time together. We talked together, you know, yeah. and, you know, I was even wondering why he had a, such a great uh, interest in me because he would seek me out, talk to me, sit down. And at the whole time, he was checking my spirit, checking my ruach. And when I went to him about his daughter, uh, you know, um, it was at the last day of the feast. I remember I went to him about his daughter and I told him that I had interest in his daughter. And he was already in full approval of it because the whole time he was testing my spirit. You know, he's mm -hmm. testing my rule up, you know, mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, he didn't have he didn't have any compulsions with it, you know, uh, uh, with that. So I told I y'all for that. Huh. You know, both my daughters are in on the class. Listen, I'm glad that they're hearing you saying this. Mm -hmm. The water, the water for that. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Well, you know, um, we've been here for a while, and like I said, we have a lot to uncover, and can't do it in one session. So Hallelujah. I think we're gonna have to um, draw this one, this one, this meeting to a close. And prayerfully, we could do this again next month, and everybody can tune in and you know tell a friend and um, mm -hmm. bring somebody with you, so we can start spreading this because. Um, we definitely need it, you know. Like I said, all the debating we see online and it's really not getting us anywhere. We just need to be able to sit and reason and discuss and, you know, like what we're doing here peacefully. And it shows, too, that we can sit peacefully amongst ourselves and speak without all of that bickering and, and foolishness. You know, we're above that, you know. Oh, God, God. Mm -hmm. 
you should let one of the men close us out in prayer. Oh, yes, indeed. So I was just going to ask you if anyone had any final thoughts or anything they wanted to say before we um, before we um, close out for the evening. We can't we can't hear. Brother. I, um, do. I feel oh. like you. Yeah. Oh, it's so lucky. Go ahead, sis. Go ahead, sis. Go ahead, sis. Well, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that real quick. Then, sis, uh, chime in. But I was gonna say I'm Ottawa. Uh, y'all can follow me on any of my. Uh, well, you can follow me on Facebook if you want to, or um, Instagram. You know, it ain't the same. But anyways, I'm I'm building a gated community. I'm building a gated community. I'm getting you know trying to get the soldiers together. Like I said, my elders together from different you know GOCC, COC, um, Israel firstborn. You know, um, so yeah, I'm just trying to get them all together, and I'm just just keep me on um, your prayer, your pala. Your, uh, your petition because it has it's definitely a lot you know you know how it is how some of our brews they feel like that's it you know if, if, if it ain't nothing else you know yeah and, um i'm like you know i'm all for the truth long as if it long as if it's in the bible you know and it lines with it like i'm i don't know if y'all went over it but i obviously you can see i'm I'm with the apocrypha you know um i haven't seen any conversation with the apocrypha i haven't seen any with the book of enoch um um i haven't oh, really necessarily been yeah, all praises. I haven't necessarily been um led to go dive into J uh, Jasher, mm -hmm. but Jubilees, Jubilees, they align with the Bible. I feel. I mean, well, I mm -hmm. get from my spirit. I, I haven't got anything off, but um, yeah, I just want to touch base with that because I feel like I haven't um, I seen your um sister princess, princess. I seen mm -hmm. your, I seen your email, so mm -hmm. I didn't necessarily get to come in here and you know and and answer those, but uh. Yeah, I yeah, it's a lot. I, I guess it's a lot of questions. We ain't gonna get to them <laughs> tonight because wow. this is a lot, of, a lot to uncover. All oh, praises. Yeah, mm -hmm. we want to see everybody give a comment. Uh, was that Sister uh, Amara? Go ahead. Amaria. Yeah, Shalom. Um, I just wanted to um give the scripture Ecclesiasticus six and seven because that's what I teach. Um, some of the younger sisters uh, to prove a friend and don't be hasty to credit them. So rather mm -hmm. than going into it with courting, um, go into it with proving for courtship rather than just the mindset of courting. Because, you know, brothers have asked me, you know, if I wanted to court and I said, I'm willing to prove, but not court <laughs> because we're mm -hmm. supposed to prove first. Okay. Then, you know, and then if you see red flags, you see things that, you know, are not going to be good for you. You can go ahead and just stop it right, you know, right then and there mm -hmm. if, if it can't be worked through. And, you you know, it'll keep you from a lot of heartache. Huh. I just wanted to say that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's good. That's good. Mm. Okay. Anyone else? Oh, yes. I just want to say this. Pathway. I want to say that I really enjoyed the uh, conversation. And uh, uh, I like like um, like uh, the Okoti was saying. I think this would be something you know good to do at least once a month or how often the Most High lead you all to do it. And uh, I just enjoyed the conversation and the dialogue and and everything of that nature. Just want to say shalom to everybody that participated that gave some sort of uh, input or whatnot. And all praises to the Most High. Shalom, shalom, mm -hmm. all praises to the Most High. We enjoyed you. Thank you. Um, I don't want nobody else. Want to say a prayer first before we do. Uh, that's if everybody, yeah. if everybody has everyone, yeah, if everyone chimed in. Yeah, I can relate with Sister Maria. So I appreciate the information that was put out tonight. It really, it really, it really was helpful to me as well. And uh, check out my website www.truthsovertraditions.com. I want to put that out there too. Mm. And Terica, Gabrielle. Uh, hi, hi, everybody. Shalom. I um, just wanted to intervene and um, ask for prayer for, prayer for my schooling. Um, I have two journeys that I need to take, and um, they're both going to be rough, but I do know with y'all on my side that I'll be able to get through them. Um, I'm hoping to transfer to one of my dream colleges, and I need excellent grades, and I'm in a very competing field. Mm -hmm. Definitely. We we'll pray for you, sis. Okay. Sarah, mm -hmm. Gabrielle, you have anything to say? I know my spiritual covering is on here too, but he is uh, not going to. 
uh, be verbal tonight. Maybe next time. Okay. Come. Uh, All right. Um, if we can get the brothers um to close us out with, right. with a prayer. I better say I can pass to you, other. You want to uh, sell the deal, and uh, or I can just say the whole thing through. No matter. Uh, no, sir. Uh, you, you, you can go ahead. Uh, okay. Yes, I normally take a deep breath while I go for the father. Mm-hmm. Heavenly Father, cosmic birth of our radiance, God of the Hebrews, Allah should die. We come before you, Power Almighty, just thanking you for this moment. Thank you for blessing us with this opportunity to be able to fellowship one another to be able to understand what it is that you would desire for us. Father, I ask that you would just continue to align us with your will, that we don't step outside of it any way, shape, or form. I counsel out the every scheme, plan, plotting of the adversary in the name of Yahweh Shem Yahushua, Yahushua. I ask, Father, that you increase us with your knowledge, that those around us may come to know you through us and get a better understanding of what they have to do for us ever last too late. Father, I ask that you would just increase our children, that you be with the young ladies who have asked for a prayer, that you will help her to make the right decision when it comes to the field of interest that you will have for her too, so that we can so we can all benefit from it as a nation. So whatever it is that you're doing, goodness Father, I just ask that you do it magnificently as you will, for you are perfect in all of your ways. You are a rock, you are a strong tower, and we come before you in the name of Yahweh, Jesus Christ, Yahushua. Let it be, it is done. Continue to be with us. Let it be. Amen. 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 All right, thank you everybody. And we will let you know, we'll get another link out when we're gonna do this again next month. All right. Hey, thanks for everybody. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you everyone for coming. Most high